how do you ascertain the risk of a trading system? Now, there are many ways to do so, but I think we can agree that most traders look at trading system's risk through its maximum historical drawdown. The problem with such approach is that it doesn't really tell you anything about what might happen in the future, and so it's not the most ideal approach. When trying to quantify trading systems risk, I employ one statistical technique that's much better than just looking at historical drawdown in isolation and will prepare you for the live trading better. To demonstrate what it is, I'll take a system that I found in one of the trading systems rental websites and apply this technique on it to see how it performs. If you're new to my channel, my name is David and I share various quantified trading strategies, ideas that come out of my own algorithmic trading research. If you're looking to improve your trading by quantifying it or just looking for some trading ideas, then may I suggest that you subscribe to my channel. Like I said, for the purposes of this video, I scraped one futures trading systems uh, rental website in, in order to get some sample data to work with. Many beginners are attracted to highly leveraged trading instruments such as futures or options. So I thought it would be a good idea to, to take um, such system. The equity curve of such system is on my screen. This is on a basis of absolute cumulative profit per one traded futures contract. Now, how do you determine what degree of risk that this system carry and therefore what capital to start trading the system with? What most people do, like I said, is they take the backtest drawdowns of this system and figure out what was the maximum drawdown recorded per backtest. In this case, looking at this underwater equity curve, we can see that this was around $8,000. A common practice is to capitalize this system with some multiple of this uh, maximum drawdown, such as two. In this case, capital to trade the system with would be set at $16,000. Now, obviously, this is better than not even bothering to look at the system risk at all. And believe me, there are many people who do just that, but it's not an ideal approach, quite the opposite. It's flawed because it assumes that the maximum drawdown is static number, which it isn't. It's a result of historical backtest. I think I read somewhere that the maximum drawdown of a arbitrary trading strategy is not the historical backtested one, but the one that's yet to come which I tend to agree with. Let me use one of my own strategies as an example. This is a simple momentum strategy that I trade as a part of my own portfolio. In the past year, it has recorded a new all-time high maximum drawdown, which we can see uh, by looking at its underwater graph. Despite this, I did not stop trading it as I generally agree with what I said before, that the strategy's maximum drawdown is the one that's yet to come. So if I wouldn't necessarily stop trading a system because because it exceeded its historical drawdown, what do I recommend doing instead? Well, let's go back to the future system by looking at its daily distribution of profits and losses. This is the backtest PNL distribution, meaning that the order of profits and losses comes from a single backtest run. The key word here is single. The problem is that when you conduct a backtest, either by hand, which I absolutely don't recommend, or in better case, by using software. It's nothing but a single array of profits and losses as generated by your entry and exit rules, whatever that might be. The problem is that the order of this array will never be the same in the future. It will never be repeated. Looking at this particular PNL distribution, we can see that the first three trades were all profitable, resulting in three consecutive profits. This was followed by two losses. But what if, when we come to trade the system live, the live profit and loss distribution starts with two losses instead? Now, while two trade sample is simply too small to base any sort of conclusions on, you get the idea. The live PNL distribution can vary to the backtested one to a great degree. Logically, that will result in the maximum drawdown to differ as well. To model this, what if I just take all individual PNL data points and just shuffle them around? So instead of starting out with three profits, we start with two profits and one loss, for instance. We won't change any trading system's rules at all. We keep them intact. All we're doing here is simply shuffling the individual profits and losses around. This technique is called Monte Carlo, 
and I use it extensively in my own trading. And chances are uh, you've heard of it already. What I've done is I took the PNL distribution from my previous screen, so the one that belonged to the uh, backtest of the futures trading system, and I shuffled this distribution thousand times. I used Python to do this, but obviously you can do this in um, any other programming language or even Excel for that matter. So that's not important. We can see the results on my screen. Each column represents one shuffled PNL distribution. So one particular array. And if I just scroll to the very right, we can see that we've got thousand different iterations of that array. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that the individual profits and losses are randomized, which is exactly what we are after. What we want to do is we want to introduce a degree of randomness to our backtest in order to emulate the future, essentially. Here's how it looks when visualized. I plotted the first 10 randomized equity curves. Now, we're starting to get an idea as to how the system's live equity curve may look like, but that's given that it was not over-optimized to start with. But the reason we did this is so that we can see the effect on the maximum drawdown in particular. Remember that the maximum drawdown per backtest was $8,000? Well, it appears that when we introduce a degree of randomness, the worst maximum drawdown we get now is north of $23,000 instead. I don't necessarily want to work with the worst uh, figure myself. What I like to do is um, I'd like to work with the 95th percentile figure instead. In this case, that figure is $17,000. Now, to put this in perspective, the maximum drawdown figure per backtest was $8,000. Whereas I concluded that most people would start with twice that, so $16,000 capital. Now, that obviously uh, means that in reality, this uh, system would be ruined. This 95th percentile figure of 17,000 means that out of the 1,000 Monte Carlo runs I conducted, only 5% of these would record a drawdown that's greater than that 17,000. So I'm pretty happy with that figure and... Uh, this is why I like to use it in my uh, analysis and development process. The original backtest equity curve is shown in green, whereas the 95th percentile one is in orange. We can see that despite both of these curves start and end at the same figure, but the, arguably the more realistic one uh, would record twice as high open loss as per the backtest in order to end at that same figure. So this is how I personally analyze risk of my systems. And I recommend you implement this yourself as well, especially when presented with out of the box trading system for sale or rent. Now, before you click off this video, I recommend that you watch this video that's showing on the screen now, as I think you'll like it also. Anyway, thanks for watching. David at Critical Trading, signing out.